We're coming to you live from the inaugural edition of the Global African Hydrogen Summit. Now, the Marisk McKinney Miller Center for Zero Carbon Shipping is a nonprofit research and development center dedicated inter alia to reducing carbon emissions in the shipping industry. Maritime transport accounts for about 2 to 3 percent of global greenhouse gas emissions. And it plays a significant role in global trade, but also presents challenges for global action. Joining us this morning to talk to us about zero carbon shipping is the head of programs at the Maris McKinney Miller Center for Zero Carbon Shipping, Mr. Yuan Svensson. Good morning, sir, and welcome to Good Morning Namibia. Good morning. What I need to say is the following. Welcome back home after 25 years. Thank you very much. Yeah. It's such a pleasure being back here in Namibia. You are at home. Yeah, I am yeah. indeed. So, so, so yeah. what on earth were you doing in Namibia 25 years ago, number one? Number two, very importantly, why did it take the long lost son <laughs> such a long time to come back home? Yeah, so um, the long journey home, I mean, that's not on purpose. I really wanted to get back earlier. So it's such a beautiful country, such, so kind people. So, um, as you rightly said, I was here 25 years ago uh, during my PhD. I worked in the um, skeleton coast, the desert, uh, for three months, uh, living in the desert, uh, looking at the aeolian fields and the, uh, and the rivers, finding out how they interacted with each other. So, um, so that, was, that was the young Johann Svensson there. Now, um, I'm back here, and it's a pleasure to be back in this beautiful country with the very kind people. Mm. What impact would you say that had on, on your life and your life's journey? Uh, Namibia, the people here, the, the landscape, the, the geology, I mean, I am a geologist, the background was so interesting and so important and it, it gave me the opportunity to finalize my, my PhD at that time. Um, so that was really good and no one else had really done that much work in the area because it's such a remote area. So obviously, virtually anything you did here was new, was research, was science. So I wouldn't say it was easy, but it was at least easier to do your field work here because no one knew about the area. So, um, so, so that, was a, that was a pleasure working in this area. Absolutely groundbreaking, no pun intended. Exactly. Yeah. So what brings you to the inaugural edition of the Global African Hydrogen Summit? So, uh, as you said in the beginning, uh, our center works for a decarbonization of the maritime industry. Um, so that's, that's all we do, and we're an in-kind uh, operator in many projects. So we work in all the projects that we're working in. Um, and Namibia clearly has, uh, together with some of the other countries in this region, a, a strong option for produ producing hydrogen at a low cost, the green hydrogen. So, uh, and that green hydrogen is a fundamental element in producing the future fuels for the maritime industry. So it's clear that we want to look at the opportunities in Namibia and see what can be done, what fuels could be produced, uh, and how could they enable the further development of Namibia. Mm. Now, if we're talking about the decarbonization of the maritime industry, how exactly does that work? What does your methodology entail? Yes. So. So the thing that you need to do is you need to find, I mean, what fuel do you want to, to decarbonize? So, so in principle, you could decarbonize the, uh, the maritime industry in two different ways. You can reduce the amount of energy that you, that you spend, and then you can, the energy that you have to spend, the fuel you have to use, has to be a zero emission fuel. So first of all, we work on reducing the emissions, but then we also work on looking at these new fuels um, and some fuels work good for some vessel segments, uh, others for other segments. So, for example, um, a fuel like um, methanol uh, is very obvious to use for passenger transport, whereas a fuel like ammonia will be more within the container industry, within the dry bulk industry. Mm. Um, so so that's, that's what we're, we're doing. We're trying to find what are the fuels relevant for a certain area, what does, when are the ports ready to handle that fuel, what vessel segments can use that fuel, and are the cargo owners, are they ready to, to pay for that green premium? I wish we had the entire day to discuss this because I've got so many questions right <laughs> now. First things first, notwithstanding the fact that the maritime industry contributes a relatively low percentage to the gas emissions, we all have a responsibility, number yeah. one. Number two, we also know that it's a significant mode of transport. It is. And ultimately, it's one thing for Namibia to produce hydrogen in a green manner, but we also need to transport the hydrogen in a green manner. Yeah. 
what role do you play in that regard? Yeah, that's, that's right, Denman. I think a, a, an important thing to remember here is we, the term we use as a fair fraction. So when you produce green hydrogen, some of that can be exported and, and used for transport away, but a certain percentage should also be used within the country itself, enabling the development of Namibia. So we heard before, uh, Johannes, how green hydrogen is being used to make zero emission iron. What we would then look at would be how do we get that iron produced by Johannes and, and the likes in Namibia when that goes to either Lüderitz or, or Wolfers Bay, how do we transport that in a zero emission way to the, to the end point where the, where the iron is to be used? So that's really our, our goal is to pick up the good work by Johannes where he has produced the, the low, I, uh, low emission iron. We then want to see how can we help the right people getting together so that it can also be transported in a CO2 neutral way. Mm. Because, I mean, that is what is required. It doesn't help that, that the iron is produced in a CO2 neutral way and then it is, has a lot of CO2 emission when it's being shipped further. And that's counterproductive and counterintuitive. And I know you, Anas Michel said that he doesn't want to speak too much chemistry and neither do I. I'm certainly not qualified to do so. But uh, the acting director of, of the Namibia Green Hydrogen Research Institute housed at the University of Namibia, uh, Dr. Zivai Shigovare, always says that Hydrogen does not have a color. And he says that particularly to us lay people, uh, hydrogen is colorless. It's the manner in which the hydrogen is produced yeah. that determines its color. Yeah. And green ultimately is the way to go. As far as the summit is concerned, housed for the first time, uh, in a, hosted for the first time in Namibia, um, what role should it play in the way forward, also as far as the maritime industry is concerned? So I, there's no doubt that the, the entire continent sits with an enormous potential of producing energy. We just have, to, and, and that can be used both for the um, activities within the countries themselves, like, like the iron or other mining industries, and also for the maritime industry. Um, so the, the African continent is a powerhouse that with the right development could provide a lot of energy for the rest of the world. Mm. It's just very important that we do that in a just an equitable way that we do not just take the or convert it to ammonia and then just transport all out, out of the, uh, the continent. We need to make it done in a fair way. But there's no doubt that Africa as a continent could provide all the fuel needed in the world uh, in, I mean, decades from now. But, but with the right development, uh, that, can be, that could be the case for Africa. And that's where such a conference like this is so important that we that we start this process, that we start finding these projects that would be the flagship projects of pointing forward, of saying what can be done in the future, how could this be developed in, in, in Africa. Mm. So that's why the, this, this conference is, is so paramount to have this and to kick off these, a lot of these good ideas. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you for sharing home once Thank again. We do hope that you have the opportunity post-summit to explore home a bit more. For your return, is that the undertaking? The plan is definitely to go to Cafe Anton in Schwakobund to have, have the Apfelstrudel. So, um, yes, I will go home. Absolutely. Travel safely. Enjoy the Apfelstrudel on the stoop of Cafe Anton. I, I look forward to having you back home in the near future. Thank you very much, Denna. The Vet Ms. Johan Svensson, he is the head of programs, Catalyze Ecosystem Transition at Max McKinney, Miller Center for Zero Carbon Shipping, talking to us about decarbonizing the maritime industry. We'll be back with more on Grace.